So today we are going to be doing Tears of the Kingdom, but touching all Pokemon types. I saw a video of this, and the time was like an hour and 30 minutes, and I was like, okay, I'm pretty bad at the game, but I can beat that. So that's what we're going to do. Also, a side note, this is post-commentary. Um, and you should subscribe. It's free. Um, so I'm going to be using mostly the same route as the guy in that video. But there will be a couple of changes to make things go quickly. And I even changed things in the middle of the run. Because I saw, oh, I can get that on the way. That'll be easier. So yeah, right at the start... Oh, cutscenes don't count. If I touch something in a cutscene, it doesn't count. Um, right at the start here, we get rock and ground. That's fire, touching the torch, water, and dark from the gloom on the ground. People have been falling ill. Miss this gutscene skip. And yeah, I'm not going to be clipping out of bounds because it's unnecessary. The time that I was trying to beat was an hour 30 minutes. Definitely possible. Yeah, there's just a, a lot of unskippable cutscenes in this game. <sighs> yeah, the first 10 minutes. I, I actually kind of like it like that because the story is totally necessary and Zelda needs to get back to having bigger emphasis on story. And this was, I guess, a step in the right direction. Now here I realized that I could actually get flying earlier than I thought because of the keys. I had originally planned to use um, fairies to get flying and I'll still have to get fairies because fairy type but yeah if you don't agree that fairies should count as flying types there you go And yeah, I know a lot of people are upset about this cutscene being unskippable and taking four minutes and you have to watch it every time. But it's the best cutscene in the game. It's worth it. Um, so, note on the routing here. Um, I am not good at cog skip or cog skip skip, and it's really completely unnecessary, um, because you can get grass, bug, and fighting, and normal, just by basically taking the intended route through the beginning of the game. 
So yeah, we won't be getting wings until the Zonai dispenser. So this is like the old at any percent rate. We're gonna actually be running from place to place. saw this cutscene, I was like, Raru? Wait a minute. Because, you know, in Ocarina of Time, the Sage of Light, Raru, is already an old man, and probably already dead. Also, I find it interesting that Ganon is just able to bench press the castle with glue. I mean, I'm not super strong, but I tell you, I, I can't do that much. I, mean, I, I, I don't know what workouts he's been doing while he's been sealed, but. It must be pretty good. Link does not have the sword. Rauru's arm does not have the sword. What? The sword magically appears on the Great Sky Island right next to Link. In the next cutscene. Is this a continuity error? I don't know. So the next type that we're going to be getting is steel. Because the Master Sword is made of steel. And... It's easy to get and pretty much impossible to miss. And I do not know why this load took so much longer than usual, but it did. There is steel. We touch the master sword. Or what's left of it anyway. The master knife. Honestly, I think it should have done, like, 10 damage, because it still looks pretty sharp. But, I digress. I'm not really sure why the gloom affected that sword in particular more than any of the others. Like, because other weapons don't get downgraded from 30 to 1. I mean... Like, a knight's claymore goes from... 38 to 20 something, I think? 22, maybe? Like, that's a huge drop in power, but the Master Sword just gets it really bad. It's probably because he was physically present. You'll see here that I'll, I will be doing throw sprinting throughout much of the Great Sky Island. It was a glitch that persisted from Breath of the Wild. But nobody ever used it in that game because we had whistle sprinting. Yeah, pretty much any time we're in the air and have the ability to dive, we're gonna dive. So this chest... 
counts as normal. You know, it's the uh, clothes are a normal type. They're clearly not elemental. I think it counts. And now another long, unskippable cutscene. But you can see where we're going to be spending most of our time, the Great Sky Island. This would never be a real category because it's a it much like Raken Lake is a clone of Great Sky Island any percent. That category got rejected from speedrun.com and I think this one would get rejected for the same reason. But I'm doing it anyway, even if it's not a legitimate speedrun. Because yeah, I saw a how fast can you video and it wasn't a speedrun and that bothered me. And also I haven't made a video in a very long time and that's a problem. And I was trying to aim for the lily pad because it's a little faster, but it missed. Okay, so here we're going to use Master Sword to cut grass. We've got grass, and we're going to be looking for an insect for bug type. There we go. We've got a restless click cricket. We've got grass and bug. Now we're going to pick up this tree branch. It does more damage than the Master Sword, and it allows us to keep our only sharp weapon. And yes, we will be picking up food because we will kind of need it. And here I forget how to play the game. Because I haven't played it in a long time. Pretty much since a month after it came out or so. Two, two or three. And yeah, like I said, we'll be going to the Zonai dispenser, so we will be needing to pick up enemy remains. And now another unskippable cutscene. I, I wish that there were more cutscenes, but they were skippable. Like, I feel like the quantity could go up, but also there could be more ways around it. I feel like Nintendo intentionally made the start of the game difficult for speedrunners. I mean, thankfully, any percent at least is able to skip this cutscene. Or, no, not this one, but the bridge. We're able to skip the bridge. I think you do still have to get the Pura Pack. Now, normally we would just fly to the Temple of Time and void out so that we could land back up here, but we don't have wings yet because we didn't do Cog Skip or Cog Skip Skip. Yeah, it's this cutscene with the bridge that they're able to skip, not get the pearl pad. And here I get the scope, get that cutscene out of the way. It's a habit that I developed from Breath of the Wild, because in that game the very first thing you do is clip out of bounds with the scope. So, it just bothers me. If, if that cutscene has to play, at some point. And I chase a frog for no good reason. And then realize, oh wait, I don't really need a speed potion, do I? Do you want this guy's weapon? And I uh, am bad at the game. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, we need to get a shield because shield surfing is very useful for movement. Um, and yeah, there's a guy by the Temple of Time that we need to defeat. But it's pretty much impossible to kill him with tree branches, so. 
Yeah. I didn't even know that you could climb on that until this room. This is the guy that I was talking about. And obviously in a second again. So you have to wait to get a flurry rush on him. And I didn't want to die. In case I missed, I did. And I had no idea how many hits it took to kill him. I haven't played the game in a while. And I never used that rusty broadsword to do it the whole run, so there's that. Okay, so our next goal is going to be to get to Ascend. From Ascend, we can fly pretty much anywhere, and also we can get wings, which are the most useful Zonai device right by there. Um, obviously, Ascend is, like, um, near a bunch of ice, so we're gonna get ice-type along our way. That's a cool strat, um, using the shield surf there. It saves quite a good bit of time. You can also share shield surf there, but I didn't want to get rid of durability. And this construct to the right almost noticed me. But he didn't. And then up here we're going to cook a meal for the cold. Because, like I said, we're going to have to go through a bunch of ice. And another good reason to pick up that stick. Is the killing the stick. And there's some peppers there. And I had forgotten about those until I turned the camera. And you can tell that I have excellent memory and totally practiced this and didn't just randomly boot up my Switch one day and start doing a run and somehow still beat the time. No idea why I made that food because I never really used it. But oh well. Okay, so next we're going to try to get the Zonai energy charge from this construct. Um, and I'm counting this snow as ice type. Um, if you disagree, that's fine. We will touch actual ice later. So, it doesn't invalidate the run. It maybe invalidates my splits. I also chose the slower dialogue option on accident, because I forgot if the goodbye option actually gave you it. It does, so it's much faster on all languages. I also learned recently that Russian is the fastest language for this game. You know, after doing this run. So it's in English. You get a good bit of momentum coming there off. And now the goal is to try to stay on the steps because the snow slows you down. Um, then stamina management is very difficult in this part of the run because you're climbing and doing climb jumps and running and all sorts of stuff. Um, I decided not to grab these rush rooms to the left here. Um, it's probably a mistake. 
It would have saved me a lot of time after we get off the Great Sky Island. Here, we touched actual ice. So if you don't consider snow to be ice type, we did it. And I accidentally ran out of stamina here because that jump is difficult to make. Except that I forgot that you can actually just jump and then shield surf. But oh well. I'm very out of practice. You're also not supposed to run out of stamina there, and you're also supposed to take out your shield and hold it while you're walking when you're out of stamina, because it actually makes you go a little bit faster on the snow. And here we are at the Ascend Shrine. There's nothing of particular note in the shrines that's different from... Great Sky Island, any percent, um, except for maybe an Ultra Ham. So it's pretty much the same as uh, when I did Break and Lake. Um, you could consider this Ghost type or Psychic type, but this is a cutscene. So, I don't count it. <laughs> yeah, so you get a send. Um... I thought that Ascend would be the glitchiest of the abilities, but actually, it's been the least broken. Good thing about Ascend is that it refills your stamina. And uh, here's what I, why I equipped that tree branch way earlier instead of the... Um, the Master Sword Knight. Um, it's for these ropes. Although you can actually use the rusty broadsword that I never used and wasted time picking up. And I just barely missed the cycle. I think it's possible to make that one. Whatever. It happens. Now we get to receive purified evil energy from dead people. Oh, of course, it's to remove the evil that's in us. I get it. Yeah. That makes sense. Also, it's weird that you can't skip this cutscene the first time, but you can skip it every time after. And yeah, the lights are blessing are carbon copies of spirit orbs. That is one thing that I didn't like about this game, is they tried to return to some traditional Zelda stuff in some areas, like the story and um, like the um, the dungeons you know, we're closer to traditional Zelda dungeons than Breath of the Wilds. 
dungeons were. And they were at least unique and themed, but it just feels like sort of half-hearted, like they're just trying to make Breath of the Wild again. You know, it's not got the special magic that is Breath of the Wild because because the first game already existed. Not really sure why they grabbed those. It's probably out of habit. <laughs> and I missed the faster ascent. Doesn't really save that much time. And you like the shrine cutscene, you can't skip this one the first time you see it, but you can skip it every time after. And if I was actually good at the game, I would only have grabbed the portable pots and wings, because I don't need a flame emitter for anything in this run. But I'm not good at the game. I really just need one portable pot and a couple of wings, but... Yeah, that was a lucky, lucky pull. I don't know why that doesn't do fall damage. Maybe snow reduces fall damage or something? Another thing that you need the Master Sword Knife for. But it does. And this flying section can be a bit tricky, so I saved. Um, we're going to try to fly straight to Fuse. Well, as straight as we can. This was one of my favorite parts of the old any percent route, and it's just not the same when you do it straight from the shrine instead of from the um, Zonai dispenser. So I am comically bad at landing these. I once lost a run because I died jumping off of this. It blocked the thing. But then when you get in the cutscene, it just disappears during the cutscene. And then it comes back. This is sort of a the same as a spawning property that they use in the modern day run to... Um, like jump off the wings and never touch the ground like they start above the starting area and then they get the wings and they fly down to the temple of time and because they never touch the ground if they void out like jump off then it will actually like teleport them to the last place they were standing and so then they can fly straight to ascend without ever having to run there, and it saves a lot of time. It's not incredibly difficult. The problem is you have to be able to turn in a uh, wing in midair. It's called wing flip, and I'm not good at that. Um, I jumped there because you can cancel a two-handed weapons animation password. And yeah, the strats in this shrine are totally different because I did not get bombs. So I have to do it the slow way. Normally you just use um, OP bomb shields here, but I'm not really sure why I grabbed all these fire fruits because I didn't need them. 
And grabbing that bow loses a ton of time, because it gives you like two or three messages. not get the fast launch out of the door. I actually wasted a lot of stamina there. And then I tried to shoot the fire, but I hit the cutscene trigger first, so it removed my fuse. Now you don't actually have to kill this guy. You don't actually have to kill this guy. But it's kind of scary because you can one-hit KO you if you don't do something to distract him, like setting him on fire. <sighs> Another thing that comes from us not having bombs is a totally different route to get from Fuse to Ultra Hand in the Any% percent run. They like use the, um, forget what it's called. They use a, a glitch to basically entangle the bow to Link's feet. And this allows you to get an infinite number of jumps. And so they just jump straight to the, um, straight to the shrine. But I should have grabbed that mushroom and I should not have grabbed the, uh, the wooden stick, because it gives you another tutorial trigger. Yep. And I also should not have grabbed that ember. Now, I should have grabbed more rushrooms and less of everything else. But like I said, I haven't played this game in a while, so my memory is a bit foggy. Anyway, this is certainly uh, saves a good bit of time. It's kind of the main reason, along with the fast wing glide, that we've been going to ascend first for pretty much as long as anyone can remember. Um, And here, I realized that I could get ghost type early, because Raru is right there, and my original plan was to go out of my way and get him um, after Ultra Hand, but that actually saved me a good bit of time. And then I not remembering that I already had a bow from uh, the shrine, the Ascend Shrine, grabbed that one, and I never used it. It's a reoccurring theme in this, isn't it? And I was planning to jump and shield jump there, but Link had other plans. That was what I was trying to do. You can do another ascent here, and I realized it right about now, but it was already too late. And then this was probably the scariest part of the run. You have to jump off and take fall damage, so I saved. It, it, was, it was very scary, but it worked. You can do two quick ascends to get up there, and I probably should have grabbed that rush room. Okay, so ult with the Ultra Hand, okay, you're moving stuff with just a piece of technology. You're not touching it necessarily, and you're able to move it. 
isn't that like the definition of um like psych psych psychic oh. right i think that the, the ultra hand counts as psychic So we're going to say that Psychic would be no. Well, as soon as the cutscene ends and I actually use it, because cutscenes don't count. Mm. Mm. Okay, so with this shrine, you're supposed to have a level 3 speed potion so that you can just jump across <laughs> these gaps. But I obviously do not have a speed motion. I feel as you can see in the top. I, I can't even remember that. It's been way too long. But I can still do one cool strat. So rails have this clipping property for shield surfing. Yeah. You can just jump up like that. That was a day one discovery for this game. And obviously I will skip the ghost split because I already got it. No disputing there. Now there's not really much that we can do on the way to recall. So it's just more GSI any percent. Now this is another scary part where you can die of fall damage. And I probably should have landed on the lily pad, because this caused me to have to run from these constructs. They are like sonic speed. I mean it you can't see it, but it's it's following me, I I assure you. One cool strat that you can do here that I did not do was you can actually walk on the outside of these stairs. It doesn't save much time, but it saves a little bit. And it's it's fun. Like the outside of the rail. Good at stamina management. But it doesn't matter. Cutscenes refill your stamina. Guys, we found the heart muscle. <laughs> we, we did it. Game over. We got our 20 hearts back. Ganon's done for. I went all the way up into the sky and all I got to show for it was this lousy arm and four abilities. Um, so this is not one of my best moments. Is some um, That you actually don't have to push on the door at all to trigger this scene. You just have to press B immediately. Normally you like push it and reduce hearts until you're at like a quarter heart and then Raru stops you. But actually if you let go, like as soon as you start, it will trigger this cutscene. And also I forgot again, just like with Rake and Lake, to jump before teleporting. So I got this cutscene of Link opening the Sheikah Slate. This one. If you are in the air, that cutscene will not spawn. So usually speedrunners jump 
before doing that. Okay, so here, um, I'm really bad at the game. I don't know if you've noticed at this point, but somehow I could not find a spot to stand on for like a while. And the one spot that I could stand on, I couldn't figure out how to ascend into it. It's not hard. I thought to myself then, I'll just use recall. I'll do cog skip, but the intended way. But no, you actually can't make it up. Or maybe you can and I'm just impatient. And I started to freak out because this was never a hard part of the run before. But then, then I, I got it. Eventually. I mean, this was day one. This might have even been intended. Or should I say nintended. Nintendo being the devs and all. This was not Nintendo. I always loved the name of this shrine. Nacho Ya. It's very good. Yeah, I'll take uh, three medium nachos, please. Actually, I'm going to rescind that. Probably didn't need to wait that long, but whatever happens, happens. Now here, initially we thought you had to make a cycle and use recall on this thing. And if you're going fast, you can. But actually, you can just ultra hand glue these together. So even if you miss the cycle, you can still get it. Also something annoying is that it always has something on the adventure log every time that you would want to warp in the speedrun. So I always end up being like, wait, what? where do I go to find the map? At this point, I was significantly ahead of um, my opponent. I believe he was about at about an hour when he finished the Great Sky Island. And uh, here's that chase that I was talking about. These guys, I mean, they'd give Usain Bolt a run for his money. Here is the embarrassing part. I'm just going to play this as a montage. So I, I've got some upcoming videos 
Um, I do intend to finish the uh, Golden Sun Low Synergy um, series. I believe I had finished the first game, but I had not started the Lost Age. Um, as far as Odyssey to player any percent guides go, that was the original idea for this channel. But not only have I not done a run in a long time, but also I don't know the speedrun that well anymore. I don't know how it's changed. And truthfully, the two-player category is such a niche thing. I mean, it's got like maybe 150 runs at this point. Or runners. All time. And the game's been out six, seven years. Oh yeah, here's why I said I should have gotten more rush rooms. You won't believe my bad luck. It's a level one speed. That is not fast enough. If I had grabbed more rough rooms, I could have made a level two speed. If I had grabbed frogs, I could have made a level three speed. Level one speed gives you 20% speed boost. And our next goal is going to be to get the paraglider. You don't actually need it for this, but since the run that I'm comparing against also got the paraglider, I figured why not. And initially I thought that I was going to try to go for that further lake, but I decided that I wasn't going to make it. It doesn't lose that much time. I'm going to aim for this lily pad. And somehow you can land on a lily pad from that height and take zero damage. Because video games have great physics. And we're just going to be doing a lot of running across Hyrule Field for the next couple minutes and avoiding enemies. Because fights slow you down, even if it means you get to take a tighter line. We're basically just going to be running straight to Lookout Landing to talk to Pura. And also, it was at this point that I realized that I could have used a wing and flown there. I feel really dumb for not doing that. But it was too late at this point. And I thought that maybe the rock would let me get into the air, but no. So yeah, as far as videos in the future, I also kind of want to make a video on this game that I've been playing called Triangle Strategy. It's kind of like Fire Emblem in its battle mechanics. It's an RPG. Um, and it's actually kind of good that I ran out of stamina there because I was trapped between two enemies and you don't make as much noise if you're not moving as fast. And I really did not need to pick that up. Also, I just realized that I should have scanned an amiibo and gotten a horse. That would have been so much easier. Because I think... I think the Epona amiibo spawns a horse. And also I should have climbed over the wall because if you go on the bridge, these guys will interrupt you. I 
realized that there was a trigger there and tried to avoid it by going to the side, but it didn't work. And I initially started heading for the tower, but then realized that Perez not at the tower. So I took a very bad line there. This is the one and only time you'll see Robbie on the right side of the screen. And I forgot actually how to trigger this cutscene. So like I said, I haven't played the game in a while, and even the last time that I did, which was for that Rake and Lake video, I didn't get the paraglider. Totally paying attention to this important story with excellent detail. So next we're going to try to go find Captain Hawes. Um, and along the way we are going to interact with a shrine. We're not going to go in the shrine, but we're just going to get it for a warp point. Because we do have to go back to Lookout Landing later. I kind of thought that there would be like more NPCs living around Tyrol Castle, but it's just kind of abandoned. And it seems like Hatino was the real capital of Hyrule between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Because, I mean, that's where Zelda is. That's where most of the Hylians are. Is a really weird ascend spot here that they used to use in an old any percent route back when they actually got the paraglider and I did not remember exactly where it was but it's right here this is the type of stuff I thought would be all over the game I thought there would be like tons of glitches that came from stuff like that, but no. No, it's just normal. And as you can see, I am now regretting the rush rooms because yeah, my speed up potion's about to run out. And we've still got a lot more running around to do. Here is Captain Hawes. I believe he was in Breath of the Wild. I think he was at uh, North Akala Stable. He's like the only surviving uh, soldier. Even though he doesn't look like he's a hundred. Maybe, maybe he wasn't a soldier. Maybe it was like his parents or grandparents or something, but it's kind of weird. Maybe Haas is his last name. Anyway, here we warp. That's why we interacted with the shrine. And then we're going to go get the paraglider, but I did not realize my mistake in not getting the tower. Because if you get the tower, you can also go towards the gloom spot, and the gloom counts as poison type. 
I made a lot of nonsensical choices during this run. I hope you can tell. And I was looking in my inventory for more speed potion stuff, but that type of cricket does not give you speed. It gives you stamina. Surprise them from the back. <sighs> it's really annoying that you have to go through all of this stuff just to get the paraglider. Like, I get that they wanted us to um, do some story stuff before going straight to Ganon, but like they knew that people were gonna figure out ways to do stuff without the paraglider. I wish that they had just given it to us, if not at the beginning of the game, then on the Great Sky Island at least. Because it doesn't make sense for him not to have one. I think that's a little heavy for her. She needs to get on Ganon's program. Gotta get those gains, Joshua. That says transport in Chica on the side of that. Huh. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these towers had challenges to get them but I feel like they weren't as difficult to get as the ones in Breath of the Wild. Like, I mean, the very first thing that I did when I got my hands on this game was to go to all the towers and just get the map. And it was not difficult at all. Even though I had little to no stamina and like no knowledge of the game i didn't watch any of the spoilers i watched the trailers obviously you saw me reacting to those and i watched the um some of the treehouse live i reacted to that too but i didn't do i didn't do much and here I made probably the dumbest mistake in the entire run. Which was going there at all. And that island to the right there is where I needed to go. But I didn't think I would make it. But I tried part of the way anyway. So I ended up wasting a bunch of time. And then... I teleported to the other shrine after I realized I had no stamina food, which is actually further from the island that I was trying to get to than the shrine that I had teleported to the first time.
I mean, it, it makes about, about as much sense as the person who designed this setup. I mean, it almost makes as much sense as not subscribing to my channel. You know? Like, those are comparable things. As you can tell, I'm very, very good at the game. I totally understand the physics mechanics. You have to move it out in order for this trick to work. And I just moved it up and assumed that it would work. As you can tell, it went really great. I wasted like, I don't know, three minutes failing to get to this island? Maybe four? It's ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that sub hour is possible with the same route even. But sub hour is definitely, definitely possible with um, all the new GSI any percent stuff. And yeah, using the wing makes this way faster and way easier. decided to get off for some reason and then decided I wanted to get back on. Eventually I realized that was dumb. But you know, like this coffee mug, or coffee holder thing. What's this called? The coaster. Like this coaster, I generally realize that what I said was dumb right after I said it. Or in this case, what I did in this game. And these fairies do not spawn until, like, you're right on top of them, which is annoying. But you do get fairy type from this. And initially I thought that I would go that way on a wing, but I could not, for the love of me, figure out how to do this. Because you you need a fan, but I wasn't thinking. I played this game forever. But I knew that I had time. So I was willing to try out dumb ideas. And I did realize that I could get both dragon and electric type fast. Because you can see right there at the Colosseum, well it contains a Thunder Gliok. Thunder. Electric. Gliok. Dragon. Two birds with one stone. Just like you should do two birds with one stone. The subscribe button and the notification bell. Yeah, I know. That, that, that was the best one ever, wasn't it? dragon, then that doesn't count. But there, now we've touched thunder. We've got dragon and electric, but we can't split because of 
um, because of the uh, error in my splits. I initially wanted to go from the fairy island to the gloom spot, but that did not end up working out. So instead, what I did was I decided to actually do the tower and go from the tower to the gloom pit to get the final split of the run, which in hindsight, this is probably a mistake. It would have been easier to glide from the Great Sky Island and probably faster too. But you get to watch Link's reactions to this. where we're going to be going, that giant red spot there. I believe it's called the Central Hyrule Chasm or something. Imagine if you just, like, dropped the, um, pad here. <laughs> just randomly in midair. I use the scope to turn around here, and then I just free fall. Or use the jump slash trick. This will get you more distance. It's even better if you use a two-handed weapon. Especially one with a boulder attached, Link has to spin around, but it will slow you down a bit. And I... Okay, it's called the Hyrule Field Chasm. We're gonna ignore this Traveler's Warning. Now we've touched Gloom, which is poison. So that's it. That's the run. 106.44. It was faster than an hour and 30 minutes. I beat my goal. I do not care about getting sub hour. I, 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 beat, I beat the guy that made the video that said, how fast can you and didn't go fast. Mission accomplished. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and watch some of my other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.